Hello, and welcome to another tour with Hawaiian Shirt Pop Club. This time we're in Helsinki, in Finland. This is the uh, main city recycling center and store. Outside of the store, they have these free to use, if you purchase something, trailers. And many, many cars in, over there have trailer folks on well, the ball, but a way to attach them. Here's the other view of it, not particularly huge, but it's nice that it has a cover as well. It's not just an open one. And I have some nice phrases like, here you're more than a consumer. And right by there is the entrance we're not going in immediately we will be visiting a section that's beside the entrance that's still outdoors but sheltered and this is an area that you can obtain free items the curious item here in that plastic bag which we're going to focus on is a an attachment for your vacuum cleaner so that you can clean up the leaves from the blueberry picking. Probably other berries as well. The basic principle is that the vacuum cleaner pulls up the leaves which are lighter and the berries fall straight down. Interesting idea and it was a free one if you were interested in that. We have to do a reasonable amount of uh, berry picking to make it worthy of having that. Then they had all this other hardware and uh, I don't know, it'd be hard to categorize it even if it were in the store. Sure there's a few things like garden furniture and this, be, this was in October 2023 so I'm not surprised that the garden furniture was outdoors. Mind you, we keep it outside here even when you're buying it new. This is, uh, I think it's a dryer of some sort. Somebody was trying to tell me it was, uh, or, it might, or it's a gate or something. Yes, they had books. Um, not the best place for books, I suppose, but if they're on their way out of the store, because they've been in the store long enough, they've been called, same with these clothes. Initially, when I, when we saw this area, there were a number of people picking through there. And to translate, come and make fines, save nature and some money. And at this point, we will then be going through the door. And it tells you that it's open Monday to Friday, 9 till 9, Saturday and Sunday, 10 till 6. So you have plenty of opportunity to visit. They do operate uh, with volunteers, and I suspect, as I understand it. But they also provide there's some more free stuff that Kinside hasn't progressed with the outdoors yet. They also provide uh, employment in the sense that they provide uh, experience for some people who have some difficulty getting jobs. And they do have a locked cabinet with the slightly more precious items. And they are nice items in there. The prices were pretty nice too. Uh, I was on the hunt. I'd been sent for a particular item and they they weren't in this cabinet. They were then they were in another one. And they were selling at about prices that the market was selling outside of there. So those are, there's two of the candlesticks to the rear right and right on that display and they were selling for about the same price as you'd get online from uh, used, used sellers such as a marketplace of some sort or eBay is what would be also comparable. Uh, 
it's a substantial place. Uh, I've seen videos of another one on the west side of the city. In a, now, it may serve a, 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 a suburb, which is to the west, which is very much more substantial. Uh, this is near the airport, and it's all built up in this area. Primarily single-family homes, but around the sub train stations, they are high density, including employment districts. So they've actually pulled together what some urbanists like to see happen. And they run their trains frequently, even, even at that distance. Uh, this one, I think, was uh, reserved or paid for, and they're just waiting to be picked up. There's quite a bit of furniture. We'll be seeing it a few times because I had to circle around more than once. Um, carpets, small ones, large ones. It's better than throwing in them a garbage, I must say. They're showing you the TV, it's working just fine. It's smaller than a lot of the TVs that are more current. So if someone has a smaller place and it's more appropriate than the smaller screen, they got a deal. All the other electronics that they have, they look like there's some mighty nice items there. Other than that, then we get into the other hard goods of glassware, other glass items, ceramic items and other de decorative items. Some of them are ceramic, some are glass, some are porcelain. So it, it varies as to exactly which pieces. So I, I, I'm using my surreptitious camera as I always do in my videos. But here you can see a bit of a scan around the area. They have grouped some of the, some of the items for the colors. Uh, for example, you see green and the blue. Separate displays from the little clear. And they are voracious readers over there. So there's a huge section of books. There's a couple of people uh, very carefully looking at books that they were planning to potentially obtain, or they're just using it as a library. I don't, I'm not entirely sure, but I think they were there looking for books. Huge amount of women's clothing, which is not a surprise, it tends to be the case. Caught my eye, it looked a little Hawaiian-ish, uh, but it was a women's top. Wasn't sure if it was a jacket, it may have been. And you can see the accessories that go with some of the stuff. Some sporting goods. They had a huge selection of skis. Cross country was high on the list, but there were uh, snowboards and and the downhill equipment as well. They do have more snow than uh, I do in my own area. We think we have snow here. They, they thought it colder, so whatever snow they get hangs around longer. And then the uh, ski poles. And the clothing that would go with them, and scarves, hats, and like I said, lots of skis. And then they've got the ice skates. Those look like they're figure skates, ski boots. Sporting goods were well represented here. And the artwork was uh, in, displayed in this, around the well. And racks of shoes. Shelves of shoes. The other accessories are uh, and clothing are all down there. This place is on two floors. 
we're on the upper floor at this point in time. Just checking. 15 euros. Hmm. It's a bit on the upper end. I think they were specifically targeted for nicer items. They seem to have some anti theft um, security buttons attached. So yes, they had some nicer things as well as, as, as compared to just the run-of-the-mill kind of thrift. I was actually on the lookout for a winter coat. Having traveled with fall gear, I knew that they might get a bit colder. That wasn't an issue to me. I could survive some amount of cold with what I had brought with me, but I traveled with um, just carry-ons. I didn't travel back with carry-on, but I traveled to there with carry-ons. Anti-monopoly. Yes, it's a variant of on the Monopoly game. And yes, you will see some same board games Sometimes they're translated, sometimes they're not. And we're back to some books here. Looking at some of the men's shirts. These the long sleeves. No Hawaiian ones that I can remember seeing there. Slacks and pants. The artwork was quite interesting. Some of them were familiar in some respect. And we're continuing on that search for the cool weather coats. These are more in the later, later kind of coats. These are just light jackets. I I have plenty of those and I had to kind of, I did have to like the kind of jacket plus to be the correct size. Sometimes you find one, sometimes you find the other. And thrift stores in that sense are a roll of the dice. You're taking your chances. I went to a number of shops on the on my trip and didn't find I did end up getting one but not not from a thrift store interesting uh, topographic map it's good size and it was somewhat mounted um, it wasn't of interest to me other than the fact that it was there and it's an interesting piece it would be very difficult to travel with uh, so no it wasn't something I would choose to bring back if I could if I were to roll it up probably yeah but but even rolled up it would be a long item and then at this point I didn't know what my suitcase situation would be on the way back that got settled about a week later interesting portrait there it's of its era it's uh, appropriate for that era very stern looking we're back to the furniture i believe that's on the first floor there's a set of stairs that links the upstairs to the downstairs and there is a wheelchair elevator but it was not in operation it was either it was broken or they or something I'm not sure but it was uh, acting as a storage area so they've got brooches for one euro pins for 50 cent 50 half a euro 50 cents they're they're like the uh, sports pins and political pins and so on and so forth it's 
some of these uh, relief pieces on the bottom, they were substantial price on them. I was quite surprised. Yeah, were they fresh? They, they were still packed? Yes. But... Unless they're willing to hold on to them for some time, they might want to consider changing the pricing on them. Yeah, so they had a substantial amount of glass. They're, they did produce quite a bit of glass in the country. They've cut back on it more recently. Um, cost of energy has, has, was affecting the, the glass makers quite negatively. But there's plenty of glass around. I'm not saying there isn't. But the, uh, the designs that they would tend to make in, in Finland are going to be slightly different than what you find elsewhere. Other countries have actually copied some of the, the patterns. Not perfectly, not exactly. And this was something that I had to keep in mind when I was on the search for those candlesticks. Um, I think I'll tell that story at the end because it didn't happen until the end, near the end of the trip. Suffice it to say, it created a lovely surprise upon my return. Don't want to just drop it in there. magazines, patterns, you name it, they pretty well have it. Kitchen components, as you can see in the distance, we'll be looking at that in a bit. All sorts of other decorative items. Again, glass cabinets that are locked up or the higher value items. So I do this recording with a small handheld, what's usually used as a spy camera. Uh, it's the size of my thumb. Might be a little bigger than somebody else's thumb, but in my case, it's about the size of a thumb. Easily just held in my hand, and it records sound as well as the image. I'm looking at alternatives. Um, as this one also has the distinction that I need to convert it to be able to process the image, the videos from it. And then I end up having and doing uh, an abacus. Don't see those as often anymore. Oh well, yes, wooden items, bamboo, ceramic. There's a whole selection there that looks like it's Eastern European from like Bulgaria, Romania. Maybe Ukraine even had those kind. I'm not sure about Ukraine. I'm, I'm aware of Bulgarian ones. Occasionally I see something similar from Romania at, in my home area. And styles of ceramics go through phases like everything else. They just it seems to take a little longer. There's a collection of plates up here of all sorts, whether they are for serving or for for having a meal or for just display. No small little trinkets and statues. People like some people like to have these. Some focus on specific, very specific uh, topics on them. I think those were uh, roller blinds and wallpaper, curtain rods of all sorts. All kinds of hardware bits and pieces. 
I had to keep moving around to avoid getting too many people because I end up having to do a lot more editing with those people that have to be edited out of the video. They did some nice displays, such as this dress and the artwork there. Back to some of the books, in case you thought maybe they were one-sided. And at the cash, they sell the, these uh, uh, bags, no, just shopping bags, because it makes sense, inspires, and is right. The reason I